Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we want to have a look at a new Linux distribution, well, it's new to me at least, which I think is quite possibly the best Arch Linux I've seen yet. Of course, running Arch, and then there's uh, Manjaro, there is... Uh, I run Endeavor OS, there is Arco Linux. There's a lot of really, really great Linux distributions out there. Some of these, like Manjaro, are not super close to Arch. They get a little bit removed. Uh, in fact, I believe it was uh, DistroTube did a video saying, hey, stop recommending uh, the... Um, LTS distros like Debian and Ubuntu, you know, Arch is the new Arch is the new Debian and Manjaro is the new Ubuntu. Very similar um, concept here. But what Guardia does, uh, or I'm going to keep saying that wrong, uh, Garuda, Garuda, I believe it's pronounced, uh, Garuda, what it aims to do is to be as close to Arch as possible, but it still has some extra tools in it to help doing the management stuff that is quite a bit difficult, particularly for new users to do. This has some really amazing tools, changing the, the shell scripting, changing the, uh, the boot management options. Uh, it has time shift integrated. I think it's the first Arch distribution I know of that can that includes that. So these are all really interesting and really fascinating parts about this distribution. After the first install, it'll walk you through an installation setup script. So it installs, I think, with more software than it probably should. But then it gives you the option to install a whole bunch more software. Installation uses the Calamaris installer. And uh, overall, it's it's a really nice distribution. So let's have a brief look over at their website, which is GarudaLinux.org. And you can uh, select your language there. They have easy installation with the Calamaris installer. They have a lot of really nice elegant effects. And it actually has ButterFS as the default file system, ZST, uh, STD compression. And um, there's actually some extra tools in here for ButterFS as well. Snapshots out of the box with um, time shift. And then we have GUI management drivers, a variety of kernels. Now, this runs the Zen kernel by default, but you have the option of installing other kernels. And then they have a GUI kernel manager as well. This thing is totally awesome. So here's some of the GUI tools. We're going to look more closely at these. Grub boot options. So if you want to change around boot options easily without terminal commands. So this thing is just has some excellent, excellent stuff in it. So it's rolling release based on Arch, of course. And they do say we only use one extra repo on top of Arch Linux repos, placing us very close to Arch Linux without having to install the system with a command line. It used Linux Zen, faster, more responsive Linux kernel for the desktop, multimedia, and gaming. And uh, it is very easy to use, and they say always free. Now, I did have, uh, I wanted to try the Wayfire edition, uh, which appears to be a different desktop environment. I don't know as much to do. I could not get that working. I went with the LXQT version instead, mostly because it had the cool icons and stuff. So heading over to the download link, uh, it does require 30 gigabytes of storage. So I needed to put a new virtual drive on my VM for that. It requires four gigs of RAM, video card with OpenGL, 3 and 64-bit system. Sorry, no um, um, no 32-bit systems here. It does require a little bit more space than I would have liked. They do have um, installation procedures listed here, and I believe there's actually some downloaders for Windows, Linux, which is an app image, and an AUR. Um, I just downloaded the ISO and did my usual thing. We have uh, the KDE Dragonized, and uh, this probably would have the same effects as the uh, Wayfire edition here, but you have the Dragonized, you have the KDE Dragonized Gaming, and the Dragonized Black Arch edition. Those looked really cool. Um, I booted it up on a um, just on my laptop as a live image. It looked kind of neat, but I did have a few more issues with it, so uh, I decided to go with uh, the version I went with. XFCE is it just kind of looked standard and boring. That's why I didn't go with it, but uh, that's okay. I went with this one. Oh, not not this one. This one's also the the gnome, although. It looks nice, nicer. Uh, LXQT KWIN version. This is the one I went with. It has a Mac type setup. Well, kind of Mac ish type setup. The Wayfire, this is the one I wanted to run. Could not get that guy running. There's Qtile. So you can 
grab a whole variety of them and just kind of do with it what you want. There's some community editions as well with Mate if you want to use that. They do have the forum. They have the about and things like that. Now, uh, before we actually get into the actual system, when you first install it, as I was saying, there is a um, uh, there is some some extra stuff that we see. And what I want to do is I want to walk through what those settings are here. So I have um, I have a, a little video that I had recorded, and we're just going to go ahead and narrate what's going on. So this is after the installation process on first boot. You have the setup assistant and the setup assistant is going to walk through and install some extra software here so this one here will go through some extra packages do you need extra Asian fonts would you like printer and scan scanner and Samba support so those are all not all in one no we don't need extra so, uh, extra wallpapers and then here we are going to get a lot of different options and with software centers now what does confuse me is it's you know giving you the option of pomac but pomac is already installed so there's a few of these settings that they did that uh, you can see our pomac is installed although do note that uh, we don't actually have all of the window borders correct so there might be some issues with window borders um, had to right click to close Pomuk, but Pomuk is already installed, although it gives us the option to install it again. I noticed one other application, and that is actually Nextcloud. We'll get into that. So here is a different kernels. We have Failsafe and a variety of other kernels, Office Suites, um, including only Office, WPS. There's offices in here I've never actually heard of. Then we have GNU Cache and, and other things like that. We do have uh, LibreOffice Fresh and Still. Uh, only office and uh, there's Joplin is able to sync notes to Go uh, Garuda Cloud. Didn't research what Garuda Cloud is. Browsers. This is awesome because this has LibreWolf. This has ungoogled Chromium, uh, Tor browser, Brave, all easily installable out of the box. Various email clients. We have Kmail, Thunderbird, Evolution, Geary, etc. And then uh, communication software, so Telegram, Discord's on here, Element is on here, Jitsi is on here, Zoom, Skype, Microsoft Teams, Slack, uh, other communication software. Again, NextCloud Client, although NextCloud Client is already installed on the system. And see over here, I'm going to have a look and verify. You can see Next uh, NextCloud Desktop Sync Client is already there. I'm not sure why they're asking us to use it again. Or maybe that was theirs with their uh, Garuda, which I didn't see much more about that. Audio software, just a variety of different things there. And then we have video software options. So it's basically walking through each one of the different categories, trying to find out exactly what all you would like to do. Uh, so you can literally go through here step for step, install absolutely everything that you need. And then once you're done, uh, you can go in there and um, finish the installation. See, even Hypnotics is in here, new software from the Linux Mint team for uh, television. Here's different development software, although it's, I was kind of hurt Bluefish Editor is not in here. Come on, guys, get with the program. Virtualization software, there's a few other options in there. And then uh, we have just other software, just a few weird and randoms. Once that is done, you have the option to remove the setup assistant when you are done. And once that applies, then we are good to go. So um, with that, let's go ahead and boot into the machine. And then what we're going to do here is uh, just have a look at the distribution itself. All right, so we log in over here. Here's our uh, session. We have Plasma or we have LXQT. Uh, I believe Plasma is in here because um, you do have the option to uh, to go with um, uh, with that. I think it was required to get the uh, LXQT to work in this case, if I remember uh, reading that properly. When we first log in here, we have the option with the Garuda welcome screen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have a look at a few other things first, uh, and then we'll come back to the welcome screen, which is certainly a highlighted distribution. I do love the theming. This is why I went with this is because the theming is kind of cool. Uh, it looks really nice, although I'm curious, do they have absolutely every software package I can think of in here done in these nice 
themes. Obviously not. Icon browser sticks out like a sore thumb. And I'm guessing that there might be a few other applications that do as well. You can see when you boot in here, there is a lot of things in here. Like I would love it if everybody uses Nextcloud, but not everybody does. So including things like the Nextcloud desktop sync client um, might be considered bloatware by some people. So if there are a lot of extra software packages, that might actually get um, uh, that might actually be problematic. Uh, let's have a brief look at Fire Dragon first. Of course, this is based on Firefox. This is their own hardened version of Firefox, and uh, I don't know exactly how hardened it was, um, but uh, it is based. Uh, it is Firefox. You can kind of see, and then uh, they're basically customizing it all and then this will walk you through um, kind of what's going on here. So uh, if you'll have a look at the settings, they've just gone through and hardened a few of the individual settings. So open links and tabs instead of new windows. I think that's kind of default. Um, and then let's see, recommended performance settings. I did check the network settings. They are using DNS over HTTPS, but they're using uh, Quad9 instead of Cloudflare or any of the other ones. Um, they're proxying DNS there. So those are some of the things that we see in some more security-hardened items. I didn't see anything else that's really um, amazing to write home about. Uh, they are using the default CRX instead of Google. That was a good thing to see. And they are customizing your privacy and security. So basically, it's just a re-themed Firefox where they have gone through and done some of the hardening options um, that... Uh, that are available. You can still install the regular Firefox and things like that. Um, you can see Pomoc is installed. We have the update manager there. Again, though, the icon doesn't seem to match the rest of the icons, but that's just uh, relevant to this individual thing. We have KD Connect installed and ready to go and a few other options there as well. So we have... Um, not an excessive amount of software, but maybe a, a few more things than you probably should have, being as that they have that excellent installer to uh, to add the extra things that we need. Setup Assistant is over here, and you can toggle off the box option if you do not want to see this again. Very Mac-like um, view down here. We have our monitor settings. We have our time shift settings, Audacious, MPV, LXI image, Speed Crunch, Pomac. Stacer, Files, Fire Dragon, and our welcome screen. Now, the welcome screen is really what makes this absolutely amazing because it takes care of some of the harder tasks to do very simply. Sure, you might be losing um, a little bit of knowledge here, but here we have a system update. We have refresh mirror list, refresh key rings, reinstall all packages, remove database lock in case you've ever had to fight with that on Arch before. Can't access anything, database lock file gets saved. Yeah, remove that thing. Remove the orphans, edit repositories, clear the package cache, clear all caches. ButterFS options here as well. You can see the sizes allocated, um, all the different options there. System components. This is awesome. You can enable or disable certain components. So if I'm like, I don't want Bluetooth support, just go ahead and kick off all the Bluetooth such such stuff here. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, and do that. You can enable or disable uh, firewall options. I'm um, changing the check boxes is kind of making things slow here. Uh, again, though, we're missing a little bit of the scroll bars there. There we are. So printing and scanning. So I can enable or disable all of the different services that I want inside of this panel here. And then inside of your settings, you can switch your shells over here. Default is bash. We have a couple options there. Uh, here's um, AdGuard DNS. There's some performance tweaks, just a few other options inside of the um, assistant. In the settings manager, we have hardware configuration. This is the kernel manager. So if you want install the extra kernels, you can um, manage them over there. Here's your hardware configuration. We'll set up all of your different hardwares and such. Partition management, time shift, system cleaning. Um, Pomoc is there again. And then here is some links to... Uh, help you out. 
Okay, the gamer option here, this guy here will give you a variety of emulators and other things like that. So any type of emulator that you might want. We have Steam, Runtime, Steam Native. We have Play on Linux, Lutris, uh, just so many amazing things inside of here uh, that are easy access uh, inside but the network assistant, we have the boot options. This is where you're going to manage your, your grub options. So you can choose where you're booting to. If there are extra, um, uh, if there are extra distributions or operating systems on your disk, you can go for those. You can enable the certain themes. You can do menu timeouts and things like that. So there's just so many nice options inside of the welcome options here as well. So all of these things together, it really gives us a very easy to install yet good and flashy, well done Arch Linux, very close to Linux with some of the, the latest technologies, ButterFS installed, very quick and easy toggle switches for all the different options that you might need. All of these things point together as saying that this might be one of the best Linux distributions uh, for Arch that we've seen in a while. It combines, you know, Arch, the rolling, the easy user management with really well done uh, graphical appearances and things that might be a little bit more sub, um, subjective. But nevertheless, Garuda Linux is a very, very well done Arch system. And uh, who knows if I saw this a couple uh, couple weeks back when I had to re reinstall my Arch computer here, I might have tried it out. Uh, for the long haul, but um, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think of this uh, Linux. Is this the best Arch Linux or not? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.